Well, welcome to the virtual Detroit Pen Show 2020 again. Um, we're just going to let you guys know that we're leaving the links up on DetroitPenShow.com for the upcoming spotlights. So if you want to register for those, you're welcome to go to the DetroitPenShow.com and register on the registration page. Um, we've got a few things that we're going to kind of go through just to let you know how the flow goes with our show. And we're going to have Corinne uh, give you that uh, information here shortly. Okay. okay. Uh, we welcome you to send us your feedback on this new format and event programming at info at DetroitPenshow.com. Our sponsor for the 2020 virtual Detroit Pen Show is Opus Macan. This Michigan-based pen maker offers custom handcrafted pens in a variety of materials, styles, and colorways from fountain pens to ballpoints. They also offer complimentary products such as ink and paper goods. You can visit their website at opusmacan.com to view their Detroit Pen Show specials and reduce pricing on select pens. We have automatically muted all attendees upon entering the event, and we ask you to, you to disable your video for the duration of the interview. You are welcome to use the chat feature to communicate with fellow attendees or the co-host. The chat feature can be found using a small bubble on your screen. Once the main interview is complete, we will invite you to submit questions via the chat feature. Afterwards, we will enable attendees to unmute themselves and you are invited to speak with our presenter and ask questions. This event will be recorded and edited and uploaded to YouTube at a later time. We will send out an announcement via Detroit Pen Show social media when the video is available. And now back to Dale in the studio. Well, thank you, Corinne. I appreciate all that talking. I didn't have to do that. So while we're here with today with Michael, uh, he's from Fat Boy Pens. How you doing, Michael? Good. 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 Um, Michael's got some really unique pens, and I'm, I'm excited to have him on our show. He was with us uh, last year, actually, at the show itself. And um, let's start off, Michael. Where are you actually located for our uh, guests, our attendees? Uh, I'm in a cornfield in Indiana. So, <laughs> okay. I, I literally, if you look out my front door, it's corn. Yeah. Uh, Northern Indiana. Okay. Well, cool. Cool. All right. So, as I said earlier, you've got some really unique designs. Um, I'm just kind of curious, and I'm sure some of the other uh, viewers are, how do you come up with your designs? and um, what kind of inspiration? How do you get your inspiration for your pens, your designs? Well, it it started back in the 90s when I was on my finger and I couldn't squeeze mm -hmm. or I squeezed the straight barrel too too hard. And it was before they had like today, there's more rubber on and that sort of thing. Yeah. So on uh, what inspired me to do like the first design that, that led to all the other designs was the spiral. You want to pull up uh, first slide number one. Uh, that was basically the the reason or inspiration was a need for on my finger that in, initiated okay. the designing and everything of putting the um, in the the pens. Okay, I'm going to see if I can't um, share that content. If uh... if you can't do it, I can try it on this end. There you go. Corinne just did it for up. us. Yep. So that's the basic uh, thing that got me to the business. I've been in it since the 90s, and around 2004 uh, is when I started to um, do it on my own. And that's basically a clean amount of aluminum, and, and then it's expanded. But I get inspiration for designs from just everything around that. Uh, that I look at or I see, and I say, oh, that might be a unique thing to be in a pen format. So it's mm -hmm. just using, you know, your imagination and then saying, oh, nobody's ever done like that. Let's try that. So that's how I, it's just, you know, you come up with different designs and then you try to make it work. 
Great. One of the things I think is really cool, um, of course, you know, we're here in the Detroit Motor City, so we're known for automobiles. And um, my boys and I, uh, you know, several months back, uh, there was a, a, a show, a, a movie came out uh, called Ford versus Ferrari, where you had Matt Damon. He played Carol Shelby and Christian Bale. He played uh, Ken Miles. And it was about uh, sort of the the race cars back in the back then with uh, the Ford company and that you got a pen uh, that I think is absolutely cool. It's one of your cam pens and it comes with a race. Talk to us a little bit about that. Okay. Well, you can pull up slide two, number two. Uh, basically, right. it's it's a. Uh, inspiration of the car that was in that movie the ford car the american car and yeah how could i make something that uh car lovers or car uh fans would like so the, the blue car is the from 1966 and basically mm -hmm. uh i thought of how about we do a cam and then have the lobes on the pen but time the the, the actual lobes to the actual motor that was in the car that was in the movie. So basically, it, if you're looking for like, what was that inspiration? It, okay, how can I combine, uh, you know, a writing instrument into something that car fans would love? So I used that idea of the cam design. You could switch over to slide number, the next slide, number three. The next slide will show uh, the blue one, the red one, and two prototypes. So if somebody's already familiar with type stuff, and this is this kind of items that I would share at a show. So right. I've actually update, updated it onto the website so that it could be actually purchased. So what you're seeing there in that slide is the blue one, which is was from the Ford, and then it has the, the timing correct and then on the red one the next one over that one is matched up with a 67 camaro another american muscle car with a three uh, engine so the name of the blue one was the gt 427 the cubic inch of the motor and the red yeah. one was the 350 ss the inch of the camaro so though that's a limited edition i believe it's 188 pieces in each color the, the next one over is an all silver and then the last one is the raw version where it's uh, the lobes are not anodized. Huh. And these are all available uh, online. For, uh, basically, the show pricing is what I put on the website. So it's like $199, but you get the pen stand with it. It's your choice of, of any design there. And I'll tell you, for anybody, um, you know, you, you we had talked earlier about uh, the comfort of it. Now, some people might look at that yeah. cam pen yeah. and say, how can that even be comfortable? Trust me, I have it, and I, I don't want to shut my, my uh, screen up, but I do have that, including the race. And if you like an awesome ballpoint, when you roll this around, you find a comfort, uh, comfortable spot. Generally, what happens is that lobe actually ends down at the bottom of your fingers when you uh, are actually holding it. And it's an extremely comfortable pen, very smooth. Um, you know, seeing as though we're on this pen and you have many, uh, many of the other models are also ballpoint. These are all star. These are all. Um, uh, standard Parker style ink cartridges, and they're readily available online and even at the uh, uh, major office supply stores like Office Max, Home Depot, or Home Depot, <laughs> uh, Office Depot, uh, Staples. Correct? Yes, yes. It, yes, yes. The Sorry. Parker style uh, refill, almost everybody uses it in the business. I have noticed that some people said the slides are buffering because it requires more bandwidth. 
you could go to michaelspence.com, which is listed there in the chat, and you click on uh, Detroit Show button, and it will show you all these slides that we're trying to show in the meeting. So you could actually just scroll down. And because I put everything up that on the website for purchase that we're showing here in the meeting. So if, if you're having trouble seeing the slides, you can see the same slide on michaelspen.com. I just I think that's on your feed is what the deal is with with all that. But we'll just we'll just keep going here. Um, we've, I'm actually okay. getting a couple of people that are saying that they can't join the meeting. So um, we're just going to make sure that um, we'll just make sure that everybody knows where to go for your website and everything. OK, um, so I suspect there was supposed to be quite a few more that were in here, but for some reason they're not able to get in. And I don't know if that's a WebEx thing. Uh, it must be. Uh, but we're once gonna keep going to start. Yeah, no, they, people can come in and go out uh, once it started, and, and we've started okay. it. So, um, is there anything in particular that you want to talk about uh, with any of the other pens? I know you've got other models, like the Tesla coil one. That's a pretty cool one as well. Yeah, so if you want to take a shot and go to the next slide. The Tesla coils are the pens with the with the wire. And yeah. I have a basic, I have limited edition in, or actually the number in a fountain pen. So you have four different design choices, solid copper, purple wire, or solid sterling silver wire. I do have fine, medium, and broad. And then the special uh, nib is a custom ground nib from Michael Masayama. I did, I seen that. I think that's a really cool offering from Mike Masayama. Yeah. Masayama ground, custom yeah. ground nib. That's really cool. It's hard to get them. It's always busy. So I have some left. Yeah. And if they're if you're interested in something like that, what he does is he takes a broad midpoint. He's and then rounds the edges to his spec, and then you get an everyday writing instrument that doesn't throw out a lot of ink, but you can get that uh, cursive, wide, thin, wide, thin look in your writing. I also and, noticed that um, these come with the uh, the race stand as well. That's really cool. I really like that uh, that idea, by the way. And again, it just goes back to, for, for me, I'm mechanical anyway as a tool and die maker. so this kind of stuff really excites me so it's really a cool design a, a cool idea um, yeah i like uh, some it was a request they wanted a pen stand to go with the pens so that's how i was trying to work something into that yeah well you certainly did a really cool job that is for sure okay i um, want to go to the next slide in order And there's only seven, so that's not too many. Usually at a show, what I'll bring is in like a kitchen sink to the show. So what I put on the website and in the next slide, if it comes up, our demo models, our demo models that were um, in production or being produced, and basically it's a, the in the high voltage with sterling silver wire uh the newest model would be the purple so it's a it's a solid purple barrel with sterling silver wire stand a lot of people at a show might want to buy just the the demo version so the other ones are just solid with no no on it and everything and there's two different pricing the regular is 299 for the with the wire and the demo bottles you can get for one thing so, you know. so just a quick question um, from my standpoint: um, Are the with with these being sterling silver? You said the uh, it's a sterling silver material. The wire itself, it's the, the wire, wire is, is solid. So the material that you manufacture it out of is aluminum, and, and then it's and then it's anodized. I assume. Right. That's the how they it gets. Um, it seals 
it's it's actually sealing the color into the aluminum. It's you know anodizing, but they uh, yeah. they have a lot of choice different uh, colors. But the the demos that are solid. See, I've had people that come back and say, well, I just want a straight black, all black. So then something like the demos. Um, it's just uh -huh. a simple design, and it and it's costs less, so you can still get a, you know an italic nib. You know, just with the standard uh, design. Um, for those people uh, that don't know what anodizing is, it's a it's a very tough finish that um, is used in uh, industry, every from aerospace to automotive. So um, what he's done here with that um, uh, with the finish on there is made it so that it's i don't want to call it indestructible but it's certainly tough and it's not easily scratched you're going to have to really uh ding it pretty hard in order to make it uh, uh scratch or something so yeah basically uh, do you <laughs> like with your finger nail or anything you couldn't you can't scratch the surface but if you took like a sharp knife and you whittled it it off but that's that's pretty tough you know compared uh to any all the other pens that are out there you can go to the next slide i just want to look at the i guess number six just to let everybody know the next slide had um a sample metallic nib and it shows a picture of masayama actually grinding the nib but uh, they might not be able to see it if they if it's too so if you want to slide six, okay. So right there at the bottom on the left is, um, you know, actually it was a uh, a customer that actually wrote that out. So that's actually showing you the what you can get that wide thin wide thin look with a special custom brown nib for Mike Masiano. He's kind of famous. He people everybody. When we go to the hotel shows, if we ever get back there, uh, he's pretty famous in, um, at least in that arena. So work for uh, Sailor Penn, so he's a master new grinder. Yeah, he's a great guy. Uh, I've talked with him many times. He's a he's a pretty good guy, extremely talented. Yeah. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah, he is. The last the last items that I had for this show. <laughs> copper barrels so what i did was actually machine out of solid bars just straight beryllium copper so there's at least different designs that i that i put up so that it'd be the last slide number seven it shows uh the spiral in a solid or the tesla coil and and these are very very heavy I was just going to comment about that with it being copy of copper. It's going to be a heavy pen for people that don't know that, but it's got a really cool look to it. Yeah, and the, the natural copper will go darker brown, like a shiny penny to an old penny kind of color. The one, the second um, on the screen, I actually take a torch and put a patina in it. So you get a little gotcha. bit of that, that coloring version. Um, mm -hmm kind of uh, seals it a little bit too so it doesn't um, you know changes as, as quickly as the red just buffed out so it starts mm -hmm. super shiny and then it then it naturally patinas but that's what everybody seems to like if they're buying that pen in copper right well and it's I think it's important to let people know too with it being made from copper it's definitely going to be a heavier pen than what um yeah. you yeah. might think so so great so that whole line right there it's your choice at 199 and that's pricing that we would use if if I was at the at the show Detroit show great great 
Well, I think um, we've got the we've covered all the questions uh, that I have, and I think you've done a wonderful job explaining uh, your pens and the designs and everything. Uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, you can at this time you're welcome to start putting them in the chat. I can answer or I can ask Jason uh, or not Jason. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can ask Michael for you, and then um, what we'll do is open it up for video uh, and audio questions as well here in a little bit. So, I'm not seeing any questions. <laughs> You know, maybe what we ought to do, we, we've got nine people in here right now. Uh, Jason okay. Braden just popped in. Um, we've got, I think Greg is new from the beginning, since the beginning. I think Leah is also. Dale, I have uh, enabled attendees to unmute themselves if they like, so they can okay. ask questions directly to Mike. Great. Thank you, so, Corinne. I appreciate that. If somebody uh, is having an issue unmuting themselves, just you know, kind of send me a, a little message in the chat and I'll go ahead and I'll enable that for you. If you have a question, certainly unmute and um, allow your video feeds so that uh, you can ask Michael any of the questions. Don't be shy, you can put your video on. <laughs> it may slow down with the uh, with more uh, screens up. Well, we're not seeing any questions. Well, I guess from a manufacturing standpoint, I'm going to just go ahead and ask you. Um, so, you do this. You got your own uh, facility, I assume. So, I'm assuming you're doing this all with uh, CNC machining equipment, turning centers. Yeah, it, the, it actually mills out these things is super expensive, but I don't own that equipment. I mean, the the minimum is probably you know eighty to for machinery that actually sure. machines these parts. So basically, I make the design, and then I I'm using a machine shops in Indiana here. So Valparaiso is one. I use one in, in near Indianapolis. So it's actually, you know, when you buy something that's made here, your, your money is going back into the machine shops, the anodizing plant, the laser guy, yeah. you know, supporting the- <clears throat> Yeah, the it's all made in America. So it's in a USA made, I, I love that fact. So I, and then the, the uh, there are some parts like the fountain pen, those come from Germany. So you can't get right. you know, that sort of stuff here. Yeah, um, there's uh, there's a lot that people don't realize. There's not really any American-made um, nibs. It's all sort of uh, German or Chinese. Some of the nibs are Chinese, some of the uh, lesser expensive ones. Um, now, let's talk a little bit about your uh, your fountain pens, are you using a Bach nib? I didn't catch what you were using for your nibs. Are you using Schmidt, Bach, Yovo? Yeah, I, I bought some I, nibs I early some. on with uh, Schmidt. So I've, I've always had the largest one they make. Okay. Um, and then that's one that's been browned by Michael Masayama to his custom. Yeah, okay. All right. All right, so I've sent um, requests to go ahead and unmute yourselves if you just want to uh, ask questions, and you're welcome to turn your video feed on. Um, and I'm not seeing any questions, so I was... Okay. I'm watching. I'm watching and talking, and I'm multitasking here, Michael. Actually, I have a question, Mike. What out of your okay. pens would you recommend for somebody who has is comfortable with a smaller pen body? Like I'm, uh, I'm somebody who I prefer a narrower pen. Um, I actually 
set up on my on my personal site yet, but I did make an S model, a slim pen. It's uh, in the new. So there's a, a normal fat boy, and then there's now the S models. Uh, I, there's some dealers that have them up out there on the web there, or, but uh, I, I'm running a little low on them. So I didn't put that into this Detroit show uh, thing, but I do make a thin pen if you prefer thin, because everybody, you know, at the shows would say, well, that's too big for me. So then I decided to make a thin one. Great, thank you, Mike. I'll be on the lookout for those. Thanks. And if I wanted to get one, I can, you know, contact you through your site and all of that. You can. Any if right. you want to join the Fat Boy Club or email any question as a follow up, uh, I can direct get that if, you, if you're looking for that. Hey, Michael, I I did purchase uh, one of your pens. Uh, whether it was the Detroit show or maybe in Ohio a few years back. And I acquired the, the spiral one, which is very comfortable to use to write. Are, are there any of the left hand a left hand person? Well, you know, the guy that actually did the programming for that spiral. And, and what you would have to do is reverse the, 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 the program to make it machine the other way. Okay. Uh, we never really completed that. We it it was thought about doing that, but I I never got it completed. So some the pen itself, the way they grip, but some hate it. So it's just up. It's a lot of people have learned different ways when they start writing as a kid to hold their pen. So then it just yes. depends if if you like it or not. So that it could be done. But I never did it to, to reverse the spiral for left. Mm -hmm. Okay. I thought that person who it. wrote the program would have made one uh, one uh, specimen on the left end version, but <laughs> yeah. Well, he 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 won, but um, it, it was because of the cost to to to, to reverse it. So oh, uh, I, I just understand. never went down. down. And and you know it, it it's kind of okay depending when you when you curl your finger over. I do get a lot of requests for the this in a fountain pen design, but I haven't been able to do that yet. So oh, okay. We'll see. We'll see how it goes if uh, like that done. And also in in solid copper, some people want really super heavy fountain pen, and they want the this tend to be solid copper and then you, you've got like a real heavy thing. The heaviness, by the way, allows you to not have to pr press on the paper. Just guide the pen across as well as it, it's a ballast for your hand. So some of the uh, older people that may have a trouble holding a thin little pen, light pen, you just let it lay in your hand and then they go like that. So there's a lot of different uh, options when you get different metals. Cool. Thank you. Along with that, we were talking about uh, with a heavier pen like that. I've got one myself, and um, you're exactly right. You don't. You just let the weight of the pen, and you just guide the pen. You know, there's no, there's really no pressure that you have to even put with a uh, with one of the copper pens or any pen really that's got any kind of weight to it. So mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. Uh, is there I anybody else? A shout out to, I a shout out to Rick. I see Rick from uh, Cal. I, I invited him. Oh, great. Well, welcome, Rick. I don't know if you can unmute. Well, I I did send him a uh, I did send him a request to um, unmute, so he's welcome to do so. I think you have to press the. There you go. I have to press the right button. There you press go, it. Rick. We got you now. Uh oh, I'm scared now. Good morning, <laughs> gentlemen. Good morning, ladies. Morning. Well, it's afternoon here now, but you're out on the West Coast, I understand. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes, the sun is shining, so I just came back from a walk. Oh, wonderful. 
Wonderful. Do you have any questions for Michael at all, or? Well, did you talk about what, how how he uh, how he got started way in the beginning? Yeah, we did a little bit uh, back in the early '90s or mid '90s, and uh, it had to do with a callus that he had on his fingers. Yeah, that's right. I, I, I never asked him how he got the callus, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's from gripping really hard on pens when. when I oh yeah, counting your hundred dollar bills. Yeah, I got it. I, it was just a matter of squeezing it hard when you when you learn to write as a kid. Yeah, I like your point about the the heavier pens. You just kind of move them around on the paper versus having to press. I think that's a great great point. Yeah, I myself actually like heavier pens, and um, I found that uh, the pens that I when I started making pens like the weightier pen. So. Um, yeah. But yeah. not everybody likes it. They've got, you know, everybody's got their own tastes. So, uh, but it's a, it's a great, uh, great uh, way of using a heavier pen, just letting the weight of the pen itself do the writing for you. Yeah, you mentioned a five to ten spiral. What what keeps you what keeps you from doing that, Michael? Uh, the basic model here is uh, uh, I have to you know, make a new cap system here. And I might be able to squeeze in a small nib, but if I want to do a bigger nib, like the normal nibs, I have to read everything, all the programming and everything. So if that's kind of the hang up of trying to get it done. Um, I have thought about converting the and trying to get a smaller nib in there. Yeah, so that, that could be a possibility, and then you have to modify it with a cap. It, I'm still working on that one. Well, I know you, you, you're, you're, you're amazing, the designs you come up with, so keep up the good work. All right, well, thank you. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> Is there anybody else that's got any questions? Um, we've, we're going to be uh, cutting out here in about six minutes to start preparing for the next spotlight. So uh, we definitely welcome everybody to ask their questions. You all can uh, allow yourselves to be unmuted and your video feed can be um, enabled as well so that we can hear you and talk to you talk and ask the questions to Mike. I also wanted to let everybody know have uh, you know the lower end range like at a show uh, basically is uh, my basic models are like eighty nine dollars saw today in the slides was like one ninety nine or two ninety nine so there's like a three level tier in the pricing eighty nine one ninety nine <clears throat> and that's right. base that's normally how I I do a show with the pricing and then it's your choice of the model and how you know how much you want to spend in the design and there's it's a little bit for everybody too there's a little bit for everybody too it doesn't have to necessarily be a fountain pen like i said the the ball points are if you haven't written with any of michael's ball points they've got an extremely smooth cartridge in there uh, and it's a standard uh parker style cartridge and this one, are you using broads or double broads in your cam pens? Yeah, I've switched over to the, the uh, I think they called it, uh, Yaffa has a super broad, soft yep. roll ball. Switched over to that as pretty much a stock. And then the, another okay. option would be the broad gel, which is uh, very liquid. So if they want that roller ball liquid, almost like a fountain pen, a liquid gel version right. uh, will give you that performance. You got to be a little bit more careful, Joe, because if you keep the point out and you stick it in your pocket, it'll wick. Right. <laughs> You're exactly your right. <laughs> Good deal. The ballpoint won't do that. The, the broad ballpoint doesn't do that. Right. So that's why I put that in as stock in the beginning when people first get the pens. Yeah, and if they want to upgrade or change over right. to a gel, that option is always available. Request. Exactly. Unless they request it. So. Yeah. I okay, we're coming down to um, just a couple I, of... There was a question there. It's Yaffa, yep. right? Yep. Yaffa Monteverdi uh, refills. 
Parker yep. shape. Yep. Yeah, we're coming down. We got about two minutes left. So okay. Um, and it's let's see. It looks like Alan's got. All right. It looks like yes, it's been taken great. care of. Yep. Okay. So. I want to say thanks. Shout out to you, Dale. Thanks for putting this together. This is really good. Oh. I really appreciate it. It's good. Well, great. I I hope everything has worked out for everybody. And uh, thank you. Uh, thank, I hope everybody uh, enjoyed what we've done for you guys. Uh, I hope uh, you go back and you visit uh, Michael's website. It's uh, michaelspens.com. He really does have some very unique uh, designs. And again, my personal favorite uh, is the, the, the cam pens that is kind of inspired off of the, the movie uh, Ford versus Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to have a can it, it's just handy it's like right here a stock there you go well and just an fyi you know <clears throat> back in the 90s i used to race a 1990 mustang lx that i that i uh put a complete gt40 package on so i oh, used to race it in uh, union grove wisconsin oh wow so i am i i like and i'm automotive anyways uh, you know from the Detroit Motor City here. So we're all kind of auto inspired, so to speak. Mm -hmm. What I had a customer was a request was they wanted a pen with uh, some kind of automotive theme. So that's when you couldn't have hit it any better, man. I'm telling you, you got it. You hit it right on the head. Nail square on the head. And I, again, I love the race. I'll show that again. I love the race that which ends up it's being a ball bearing, right? Yeah. Yep. It spins. I, well, you and I call it a race because we know what it is, but for people that don't know what it is, it's yeah, it's a ball bearing, and then so that's, that's what that's allows the way you I to know spin. It. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I I uh, I just want to thank you again. Thanks to everybody that. Um, uh, that participated with us. Again, stop in and see Michael at michaels uh, michaelspens.com. We're going to close the meeting here in about 15 to 20 seconds. So we hope to see okay. you at the okay. next one. Uh, the next one's going to be Lemire Inc. Uh, and that's at 1230. You guys all have a great day and we'll talk with you soon. Great job, Michael. Thank you. Thanks. Well, what Thank you.